Hello, and thank you all for joining us. I am Nikki Otten, the Associate Curator of Prints and Drawings at the Milwaukee Art Museum, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this evening's talk by Tanikia Word. Word is an artist, educator, scholar, and founder of Black Women of Print, a home place for Black women printmakers. Tonight, she will discuss Black Women of Print's inaugural portfolio titled Continuum, which we acquired for the museum collection in December of 2020. Before I introduce Tanikia, I would like to thank Print Forum for sponsoring tonight's event. And I'm also grateful to the African American Art Alliance and Tony Petullo for their support in acquiring the Continuum portfolio for the museum's collection. The format for the event will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session. So please feel free to submit questions at any point through the chat function. And now I'm honored to introduce Tanikia Word. Word is based in Milwaukee and her visual art practice includes paintings, drawings, prints, and book art. Word holds a bachelor's degree in English and Afro-American studies from Howard University and a master's degree in arts management from American University. She is currently a PhD candidate in urban education with a specialization in art education at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Her dissertation is titled Black Womanhood and Black Aesthetics in Art Education. Word has participated in national exhibitions and her work is in many public and private collections, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Getty Research Institute, the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, Smith College Museum of Art in Massachusetts, and of course, the Milwaukee Art Museum. Word founded Black Women of Print in 2018 in order to increase the visibility of Black women printmakers who have been excluded from history and to create an equitable future within printmaking. In 2020, Black Women of Print published a portfolio that included work by each of the society's seven founding members. Delita Martin, Jennifer Mack Watkins, Latoya Hobbs, Tanikia Word, Stephanie Santana, Leslie Duguid, and Angela Pilgrim. For the inaugural portfolio, each founding member selected a Black woman artist who influenced her current practice and created a submission that expanded upon a signature element of that artist's work. As Word has described it, this portfolio is a continuum of Black women's thoughts and how as Black women, we use visual language through the medium of printmaking to pay homage and reimagine. She will tell us much more herself. So with that, I will start sharing my screen and hand it over to Tanikia. And Tanikia, you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. I just want to thank you for being here with us. And I'd like to talk about the inaugural portfolio for Black Women of Print entitled Continuum. The first person um, in the portfolio is Delita Martin. And what we do at Black Women of Print, we, have, uh, we center the African diaspora within our aesthetics as well as within our practice. So I will be speaking about every person in order of which they were born, giving respect to um, those who are not really elders right now, but who came before each other. And I wanted to specifically talk about Continuum. What we did, we looked at the West African Sankofa principle, which is, um, it sort of translates to it as not taboo to go back and fetch what you forgot. So the symbolism for that is a mystical bird and the bird's head is backwards as it moves forward and has an egg in its mouth. So what we wanted to do was talk about the migration of going forth, um, looking for the past for wisdom, while simultaneously holding and protecting the future um, as we journey together um, within the foundation of Black women makers. So Delita Martin looked at the wonderful Elizabeth Catlett's work, and she decided to look at the visual language that Elizabeth Catlett has used within her sculpture as, as well as her print. Looking at the everyday person, particularly minoritized people, she was very enthralled with Sharecropper by Elizabeth Catlett. So she decided to use those choppy bold lines and contours within the work to also have that silent gaze looking at the strength of the black woman. And then she decided to add in collage element, which you will see 
um, a reoccurring theme within the leader's work is the circle. And she looks at that as the moon and looks also about how um, the life cycle works within the woman as well. Then you will see that there are moons within um, the upper part of the chest for the black woman. Again, she also used the iconic black ink on white paper within printmaking. Um, next, we will see a few pieces that Milwaukee Art Museum has in their collection for Elizabeth Catlett in case you are interested in seeing that work. Again, you'll see those lines um, again for that. Now we are going to move into Jennifer Mack Watkins' work. <clears throat> She was very intrigued by Betty Saar. And if anyone has ever seen Betty Saar's work, it has a lot to do with assemblage as well as symbolism. You will see that there is a target um, symbol on Jennifer Mack Watkins' work. This is Mokihango, uh, which is a Japanese woodcut um, technique. For, and she also has screen printing. The target is there to symbolize how the black body is marked um, before birth, um, during birth and after. She specifically created this print when she was, I think around seven months pregnant with her son. And she began to think about the Black Lives Matter movement, civil rights movement, all the different things that um, black people have faced, specifically African-Americans um, within systemic oppression since antebellum um, chattel slavery. And so that target is there and she wants to think about future undetermined when it's looked at through the lens of systemic oppression, but also um, how is the black body marked um, from societal standards and how do we as black women who um, carry these um, children and nurture them, how we can protect them. Um, here is a slide of um, Betty Sarr's work, Return to Dreamtime. And this is the work that she specifically looked at um, and which stood out to her when she was creating Future Undetermined. Okay, in the next slide. In the next slide, we see Latoya Hobbs' work. She is looking at the works of Ms. Burroughs, which is Margaret T.G. Burroughs, Taylor Goss Burroughs. And this piece is absolutely wonderful in the fact that she decided to use woodcut. And it was a different technique than what you've seen with Jennifer's work, who also used woodcut. Um, this piece, she decided to use stippling. Um, within the work, iconic black and white. And then she chose to use complementary colors with the um, purple and also the yellow. And then she decided to use some sort of pattern within the background that carried into the foreground of the hat and also within the foreground for the jacket. And uh, this is one person who she definitely aligns herself with because she Love the strength of Margaret because she was also a cultural organizer as well. And particularly within the next slide, you'll see the work that intrigued her to do this, which is um, Face of Africa. And then you can see the stippling within the body. It's more of um, the tone is different within um, Latoya's work um, versus Margaret, where you'll see that it's more of a darker tone with that. And then she allowed the highlights to be brought out within her work, which was more of a contemporary decision to do such. And then we'll go into the next slides, which you'll see these works are in the museum's collection, the Milwaukee Art Museum collection. Um, so you'll see um, both figures again, you'll see stippling techniques used, understanding of the lines and contours um, as well. And then next up is my work. This piece is called Starshine and Clay. And it is talking about the liminal space that Lucille Clifton wrote in, I believe her 1993 poem, uh, Won't You Celebrate Me? And she spoke about 
um, Black womanhood and how we are particularly in a liminal space as minoritized people and how we have built ourselves up in a place that does not see us um, beautiful or who does who doesn't recognize that although we don't want to be resilient all the time we have become the face of resilience and building whether we're giving our children to society to help bring it forth to build the white house and other things <laughs> so these are the different things that if we talk about for this i particularly look at allison sars work because she has fantastical hair uh, within her pieces. Usually her figure is um, head is turned to the left, whereas I turned mine to the right. I also have the arch and the halo um, within the work, which you'll see. And that's kind of representative, which you'll see in most Western religion uh, works. But I look at the Black woman um, as a spiritual being. You will also see that the head has taken on the characteristics of a night sky, the shoulders of um, land. Well, actually the shoulders as um, like an oceanography um, mapping. And then the terrain is in the marble shirt. So basically we're seeing a harmony between the black woman, nature and spirituality. And I take those prongs from Alice Walker's uh, womanism. Um, it is a, uh, theoretical framework within Black womanhood, Black thought. And I love to visualize those things that have a visual language compared to that. And then you'll see Alison Sars uh, work on the right, high cotton and the fantastical hair that gravitates upward. These are a few pieces that you'll see from Alison Sars um, work that is in the collection from Milwaukee Art Museum. And then we have work by Stephanie Santana. Stephanie was um, particularly interested in the Cuban artist, Afro-Cuban um, artist, Belkis Ayan. And she looked at uh, the collagraph technique, which you use some found medium or board or masonite, and you can attach anything to it from the has texture glue, and it creates a specific pattern when you, or in texture, when you roll it through the etching press. So this is a screen print. And what Stephanie decided to do was to hand draw this uh, effects of texture that she would see um, within a collagraph. So she translated that technique into screen printing by hand. And her work particularly looks at Black interiority. And what is unique about the Black interiority for Stephanie, she gets the images from her family archives. And she looks at these works that are typically during the Jim era, of Jim Crow era, and when she looks at those work, she kinds of bring the stories forth through rememory, memory, and some collective memory involved as well. And what Stephanie wants to do is look at cultural preservation from an emic perspective um, and bring those stories to light in the wake of most of her family's existence. So in the next slide, you will see work by Bill Kisaya. And then we have Leslie Duguid. Leslie Duguid was mentored by the wonderful Wanda Ewing. And Wanda Ewing was a black woman printmaker. And the great thing is that Leslie found within her stash of um, ephemera, a piece of wallpaper that she had purchased um, while being mentored by Wanda. And she decided to take that print to redraw it 
and do a screen print. Within one of Ewan's work, there was this comical edge within the Black woman at pinup. And then she loved to use florals, which is, you know, visually a visual language of feminism that we could see within um, the Western canon. So Leslie decided to do a, a version of that in homage to her mentor who um, passed away. And the work is um, untitled, but when you know the backstory behind it and you know the work of Wanda Ewan, uh, it goes without saying that it doesn't need a title. You can feel the warmth, the love um, within that piece of work. And next up we have Angela Pilgrim. Angela Pilgrim decided to look at the works of Emma Amos who is one of my uh, biggest, biggest icons within um, printmaking and painting in general. So we kind of tussled over who was going to get this one, but <laughs> she ended up with it. She decided to use um, Rizzlegraph. And Rizzlegraph has uh, 80s aesthetic because it's kind of like a, a Xerox machine uh, and a screen print mix into one. So there's these um, drums that holds the soy-based ink, and then you create the, what they call the master screen, which is a mesh screen um, with the different images that you've created, and you layer on top of each other. And it is infamous for not having a tight registration. And what that means is if you are doing multiple colors, you would typically within screen printing you want them aligned so that they just lay on top of each other to make new colors. But it's you're leaving it to chance with Rizzo because it's going to wiggle or do whatever else it wants, which is you know great within um, printmaking. She decided to use the pattern borders, which Emma Amos has done so much within her painted work. She was also a textile artist, but she would go and pull different fabrics. Um, like um, it's kind of reminiscent of African Dutch wax fabric that she would use. And she would put borders around the works or incorporate textiles within the work as well. And Emma Amos was very into um, domestic style printmaking in some areas. And what Angela wanted to do was look at the Black woman and also look at Black hair. So within these figures, you could see like the perm box in the upper left-hand corner. And then you kind of see a bit more of things um, in the lower right-hand corner. Well, left-hand corner, sorry. And these are two women who are donning natural hair, the iconic Afro of the 70s, um, and then more of a contemporary style of wearing the natural hair as well. So right there, she's kind of looking at the things where we as Black women look into whether we want to have our hair straightened um, to depict what respectability politics may have um, occurred during certain movements, or if we wanted to um, use natural and show our natural hair um, within, you know, the crown, you know, we just also had the crown um, act as well. So she was speaking upon that, and then she used some ephemera um, for the scents because it's kind of reminiscent of what you'll see in the beauty salon um, back in the day. Uh, where the price tags were um, on the works of art. And this is called Tender Headed and Heavy Handed. And she wanted to use that title because if you are a part of the African-American community or within the Black diaspora, um, specifically um, with a Western um, a beauty aesthetic, then you would understand Tender Headed and Heavy Handed. And this is a piece that um, she really loved by Emma Amos to sit. And this is part of her Sunbathers um, series. And it uses the two figures, the two black women. So you can see that within Angela's work, she continuously used those two figures together um, to show that relationship between um, black women.
All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, it's wonderful to hear more about the portfolio because I know I personally was really excited to bring it into the Milwaukee Art Museum's collection that has some connections with works that are already part of the collection. And it's great to hear you expand upon what those connections are a little bit more. But we have plenty of time for questions. So if anybody would like to ask a question, please feel free to do so. You can use the chat function. I'll start off with a question. I noticed that there are a few examples of translation from one medium to another in the mm -hmm. portfolio, like translating a uh, ephemera piece of wallpaper into a drawing mm -hmm. of wallpaper or translating the holograph to a different form. And I'm wondering if that is something that was an intentional part of making the portfolio or if it just so happened that a few different printmakers decided to to make those translations in their works. Yeah, so the cool thing about the portfolio is um, when I curated and creative directed the portfolio is that all I gave as far as restrictions was, you know, you, it has to be 11 by 15. Um, it has to be on paper. And we specifically use all sorts of Mohawk paper, like different kinds. So no one knew what the next person chose. Um, as far as the paper, um, the they only knew which printmaker they chose. So it was more so a surprise for what happened organically for everyone when they actually received their portfolio. Because I didn't show the portfolio to anyone. I, had, I was the only person um, to see it because I had to collate it and everything else. But um, within each person's work, we're always looking at um, material culture. We're looking at um, portraiture, rep representational art, figurative, and also looking at the works in the research of the Black women that we chose for, as printmakers, um, as well as a whole collection of other things that we are personally interested in. So um, we had no clue what anyone was going to do. I really like that chance element of it and yeah. how the whole thing <laughs> coheres, even though it you didn't really know if it would or not from the beginning. But we have a question in the chat. Erin um, says, very excited to have this work in the collection. How did you set about finding artists to bring together for the portfolio? So when I started in 2017, I... Um, talked to Delita Martin, and I in, ended up interviewing her for Pressing Matters magazine. And then I wanted to talk to her more about pre-dissertation work that I was working on. And then I said, hey, Delita, I had this idea. Um, I've been sitting on it for a while, but I want to create an organization for Black women printmakers. And she said, whatever you need, I'm in. So I was just like, okay. So then I reached out to Stephanie Santana, because I've known her over the internet since 2006, I believe. And she and I have still, we have not met. We'll be meeting next month for the first time. Well, no, in October for the first time. And um, after that, then I reached out to Angela Pilgrim. And then Angela told me about Jennifer. And then she later told me about Leslie. And then Delita and I both knew LaToya, but I reached out to LaToya. And from there I sent out, and then we, Jen Hewitt was also um, a part of this at first. And then I sent all of that information that I had written down about the organization, the structure of it, the ideas that I was having, how I wanted to also create a portfolio, sent that, sent that out to them. And they said that they wanted to be a part of it. So it organically happened in that way. And then it was mandatory for the first portfolio that everyone who was in the organization would participate. So they had already known that they would be signing up for that. And um, this year we're working on a different portfolio, but it's not gonna be everyone. It's not mandatory. <laughs> Do you already have a tentative release date planned or is it still? Yeah, we're, um, it's actually going to be um, myself and Stephanie Santana 
who will be the only two people in dialogue for the second portfolio. She's curating this one. Um, I'm not, I'm just working um, on the pieces. We each are working on three pieces each that kind of connect to one, one another. And um, it has much to do with um, Octavia Butler. <laughs> oh, that's really exciting. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing, to seeing that. And so this time you are seeing the works that each other are creating rather than having no. unveiling them at the end. Okay. No, the only thing that Stephanie, because she's doing the rules and everything else, so I'm just following the rules in regards to that. Um, she asked to see what color papers and what papers, because these are things kind of like you, you know, want to know. So she just knows the color papers that I chose and she has certain restrictions um, for that. And it's going to be released in late autumn or early winter of this year. So yeah, so we've been uh, working on those and I'm pretty excited about it to see how it's going to happen because I have nothing to do with it this time other than creating the work, which is pretty fun. <laughs> That's great. And Tanikia, could you tell us about some of the exhibitions and further plans that Black mm -hmm. Women of Print has going on right now? So um, we are, we've been working for an entire year. Well, I've been working <laughs> for an entire year with a web designer and sending um, things over for feedback to um, our board, which is Delita Martin and Jessica Solomon. And then Stephanie Santana is our communications director. Um, and she's a founding member president. So I've been sending things over to them. So we have a new website that's launching um, the phase one of it next month. And we have um, application opening for more Black women printmakers to expand. Right now we have an exhibition that I co-curated with Delita Martin um, at Nowhere Art Gallery um, in Oaks Bluff, Massachusetts in Martha's Vineyard. It is called Entitled Embodied. So all of the, Ann Johnson, Delita Martin, myself, Latoya Hobbs, and Stephanie Santana has work in that exhibition. And at High Point in September 17th in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Delita Martin and I have co-curated an exhibition called A Contemporary Black Matriarchal Lineage and Printmaking. And there will be um, established Black women printmakers, as well as mid-career Black women printmakers showing. There will be a total of 12 um, people with um, 24 pieces of work showing. The opening is on September 17th um, for that. And um, we have a lot of other things in store for 2022 as well for exhibitions. Um, and just super excited about everything that the organization has um, planned. And um, yeah, so that's a couple of things that we have going on presently. That's great. And then are you seeking a new cohort of members of Black Women of Print? Yes, yeah, so that's gonna open up in August for um, cohort two. Cohort one included Leslie Duguid and Ann Johnson um, for that. And, um, we had a few members who um, left who were founding members um, to pursue other things within um, their career. So right now we have um, Latoya Hobbs, Delita Martin, myself, Stephanie Santana, and Johnson. And we have um, a lot of women who are interested in becoming cohort two um, for that. And um, I'll be in October, I'll be doing a residency at Black Box Press Studio, which is Delita Martin's um, studio. So I'll be doing some stone lithography um, there during that time frame. That's great. It's a lot of exciting up and coming <laughs> projects. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much, Tanikia. And I'm, again, very excited to speak with you. Happy to have the work in the collection. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. I hope you thank have a you good all. evening.